Hello everybody, um, I'm really pleased to see you all, so thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, today I'm just going to show you a, a quick edit on a, um, a shot that I had um, taken on Brooklyn Bridge. Now Brooklyn Bridge is a terrible place to try and photograph, although the pictures that you can get from it are fairly stunning. The problem with um, Brooklyn Bridge, along with many other places, is hundreds and hundreds of tourists, so you've got to be a bit judicious in uh, your shooting. So. This is the image that I'm trying to get to. So this is the original image and you can see it's uh, very cluttered with lots of people walking up and down the bridge and taking uh, images. Other issues is that because of uh, a wide-angled lens, I was uh, getting an awful lot of um, uh, this distortion uh, on the vertical. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks uh, around that. However, I think you can get a good image from here. So um, how do we edit this? Well, uh, in this case, we're, we're looking to, to do a black and white um, conversion so within Lightroom you've got various options on uh, black and white conversions uh, and I've just picked uh, a simple monochrome um, through the Adobe. If you look here there are various options that you can uh, pick up and I'm not going to uh, go with any of those just simple black and white. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is to uh, look at the optics of my camera and enable lens corrections and you'll see that by clicking this, it will have picked up uh, the camera that I was look, uh, using, and you can see that it makes sort of quite a difference. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to show you, which is something that you may have not used before, is the geometry. And uh, here you've got various um, things that you can do. You can move the, uh, the image uh, left and, and right, um, and here you can change the um, uh, the distortion of the image uh, on the vertical. So here I'm going to bring the image back and what I'm trying to do is make sure that the, um, um, uh, the, the support for the bridge, this, this part here, is as close to um, looking correct as possible and it's about there. What you see though is you get a lot of white space which you're going to have to edit out anyway, which in this case isn't going to be too too much of a problem because we're going to crop um, these people out. So in this case, I'm I'm going to go for a um, uh, a, uh, a 16 by 9 wide um, wide letterbox crop, uh, and you can see that I still got a, a bunch of problems here. So if I'm edit down, uh, I can remove this guy's head and get as much of the image as possible in here. Uh, I think that's about where I want to go. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing is I'm, I shot this handheld and I've got a terrible, um, one leg is shorter than the other, so I'm just going to adjust for uh, trying to put it in um, uh, uh, level you can do this automatically uh, you can see here uh, or you can do it by eye in this case uh, we were about the same here okay so that's looking much better um, but it's quite flat and um, the great thing about black and white is that you can play with the colors but first off we do a, a fairly simple um, standard edit we're going to uh, before we get into adjusting the, the tone curve, uh, I think we're going to bring down the blacks a little bit. We're going to um, probably come off the whites a little bit. We're going to push the highlights a tad and increase the, um, uh, the contrast a little bit. Um, Just by moving these principal sliders around, you start getting um, And as I said, in um, black and white, you have this great opportunity to pick up um, the individual colors. Now, the first thing you can do is you can change the white balance, and that makes quite a difference in how the image looks. 
uh, in this case I'm going to leave it about the same you can also do the same with uh, the tint it depends on the colors of uh, the image which is still there and the big one here of course is the blue sky if I bring down the blue sky you begin to see some of the details back in the sky that day the other thing you can do to bring out some of that is to increase the dehaze function um, it's leading to some darkness around here which I want to adjust in a little bit I'm hesitant to push up the clarity but we might do just a tiny bit and then you can see which other colors there uh, is are in the image uh, uh, that's not too bad but what we do have is an imbalance on the um, the tone across the image because of all of the um, the sky is much brighter on the white so I'm going to put in a linear haze a linear gradient across here and it's actually a little bit strange let's move that down a little bit just to balance off the image a little bit better and you can check by the um, uh, the histogram it's still a little bit dark so I'm going to bring that forward and increase the increase the blacks by coming down here with a little bit of a classic S curve and now we've got a much more even tone across the image uh, and I'm going to just put in a little bit of a vignette what we see now is this part of the image is quite dark so I'm just going to bring up the uh, the shadows a tiny bit and the last thing I want to do is just bring in the crop a little bit to try and get a little bit more central and that I think is about that thank you for tuning in and hopefully uh, I'll be able to do a couple more of these while we're all locked down on uh, uh, self-isolation. Thanks for looking in and hope to see you soon. Bye. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to see a little bit more of my work, you can go to keithmasonphotography.com.